Dover Harbor is just five minutes down the road from Hare Bay on Newfoundland's Kittiwake Coast. I'm here to meet Brian and his dad, Alec, and then we're heading 30 miles off the shore looking for sharks. Let the adventures begin. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Shark Company. Step yep. aboard, man. Donnie. Hello, Donnie. Welcome aboard, buddy. Thanks, man. So this is the boat? This is the boat. All right. Boat we're going in, yep. Uh, big old fog bank there. Was that the... Yeah, it should burn up when the sun comes right out. Right on. Mary. So still going? Oh, yes, absolutely. Everything go? Yeah. And I'll winds go. are a bit high, but is that OK Yeah, she's, you? Going, she's going to be a little bit windy, a little bit rough, but we, we, should, uh, we okay. should be able to make it work. I don't I got much stuff. I uh, yeah. got a wetsuit. If, the boat sinks, uh, <laughs> give, me, give, me, give me time to throw that on. Plus, you want a period? A period? Tiny drink. <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, thanks. Right. Here's to a great day of uh, shark fishing, boss. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me aboard. <sighs> <laughs> what do you think? Refreshing. Wow, Let's start her up and go. Yeah, we got to uh, we got to pack the boat up here now first before we get on to go. All right, what do you want me to do? Start passing me in some gear if you like. Yep. You just want to jump out there. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the episode. And remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell button so you'll be notified when we upload new content. Enjoy the show. We get the rods first, Donnie, if you don't mind. I gotta get those kind of out of the way here. We don't want to put that one That's a, That's the tag kit, which okay. is very important. Cool. And this is, uh, this is the two buckets of beautifully, beautiful smelling chum. All right, boss, we'll uh, have a good day. Yeah, <laughs> see you, bud. <laughs> so when he told me the boat was like 25, I thought it was meters, but uh, it's feet. So uh, it's a little small boat for going out there. I thought it was going to be a big old luxury boat, to tell you the truth. But, you know, just right there, there's a big, huge bank of fog. I don't know, but it's uh, almost 30 miles out in the North Atlantic and catching shark, you know? It's not a walk in the park, but I suppose it's adventures unknown, so it's perfect fit, so let's go, I suppose. I'm ready. All good? Yeah. So what do I do? Just chill out. You're just here to chill out, buddy. It's fine. Yeah, it's your day. When we hook a shark, you won't be very relaxed. Oh, I'll be on the. I'll be You'll on be the on the rod. rod. That's cool. You'll have very, uh, very little re relaxation time yeah. actually once once the shark hits. So you reel him in from that, or you take the rod out and. We're going to take the rod out. You're going to have a belt on, just you know, just to hold the rod in. Okay, right for on. stability. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's just you and the shark. So there's not much gear you need. A few rods. Tagging kit and a few Perrier's, you're good to go. Yeah, Perrier's is, are, are really important. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's key Gotta to, keep hydrated, right? Key to success here. Yeah. On the boat. <laughs> yeah. What else is out in the water? Squid, squid, lots of cod, codfish, capelin still, tuna. Yeah. We got a lot of tuna this year. And how are the cod? Are the cod? Uh, no, there's a lot of codfish this year. A lot of codfish. I've got a nephew that's a commercial fisherman. And I was just talking to them a little while ago there, and uh, they uh, they caught uh, uh, this morning. They caught around 2,000 pounds in in a couple of nets, just two nets, which is uh, pretty well er unheard of when 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 I fish. So uh, yeah, and everybody's in the same boat. They're all getting the same catches. So yes, there is a lot of cut around yeah. our area this year. Yes. Shark time, Danny. Perfect. Can I go up in the bow? You can. I'm a little nervous, but uh, maybe it's excitement. Not to be worried about, man. You're in a you're in a great uh, you're in a great boat. These boats are extremely seaworthy, uh, but and you're uh, in good hands. Yeah, I don't even know you really. <laughs> From Facebook, it's a funny thing. You could be uh, setting me up here to you know. It could be easy for jump. But yeah, yeah, there's no uh, and I've been under bricks with chains on it now. <laughs> you know? 
Newfoundland's weather is truly bizarre. We were squashed into a sun puddle with fog as far as you could see in every direction, including out to the North Atlantic. Our first stop is Bragg's Island, a resettled community where Alec grew up and Brian spent his summers fishing with his dad, a beautiful ghost of Newfoundland's past. Alec and his buddy wrote a cool song about Bragg's Island. We're stopping here so they can play it for me. We're here on Bragg's Island, 10 miles out in the middle of the North Atlantic where Brian's family is from. And uh, yeah, we just stopped here and then uh, we're gonna go another 10 miles out and go shark hunting. Actually, shark fishing. Shark fishing, yep. Tagging sharks for research, which is a really nice thing yep. to do. Catch and release and research. A glisten in harvest for a fisherman's soul. Where the white can dies and the king eyed his sword. I say with delight. Past high rugged shores And frolic o'er waves that roll endlessly by To white tilted stones where my ancestors lie Yeah, it's just great to be here. Bragg's Island where your your family the history of your family. Yeah, I mean all my all my uh, my ancestors right on the line. I mean I guess you can trace it back for hundreds of years, this is where they all came from, right? Yeah. And uh, the, as you can see, they always return there to fish, right? Yeah. So how many pounds is this? The cod. The cod? Yeah. Yeah, 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds? Yeah, yeah. That's a good haul. Right. And what are you doing? Wait a minute. You're cutting the tongs? Cool. Even as kids, we would, uh, our parents would take us out of, out of school, you know, a little bit early in June, we'd come here, and we wouldn't go back anymore until September, so we fished here our whole, uh, our, our whole summers and stuff. So this is where we grew up as kids, basically. Um, and um, of course, as a kid, your summertime it gives you your fondest memories, and uh, and it's always uh, it's always a pretty good feeling every time you come back. Back to that long tickle, safe channel through stone. I can still hear my mother, your safe boys, your home. Where the white gander dies and the king eyed her sword. I sail with delight past high rugged shores. And a frolic or waves that roll endlessly by. The white tilted stones where my ancestors lie. Sorry to uh, interrupt the party here, but uh, it's time to do some shark fishing, I think. They're jumping early. They're jumping, yeah. <laughs> we got, uh, it's that right. time of day. Let's get on the go. Thanks. Okay, well, see you later, man. We'll see you at your party tonight. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the show. Remember to follow us on social media, on our Instagram account and Facebook for lots of giveaways, cool videos, behind the scenes, and lots more. Back to the show. And now we're heading out to sea looking for sharks. Basically, this is our uh, our shark leader, and uh, 
essentially what this does is the, of course you have the hook and you also have the wire trace leader and this, the wire um, has two purposes. One, because obviously their teeth are so sharp, as soon as it touches a line, it's just, or anything that it touches, it just completely uh, chops off or, or whatever. But so yeah, basically the uh, the shark skin is uh, extremely abrasive and it's, you know, you rub your hand one way is smooth, the opposite way is like a hard grit sandpaper. So anything that touches it, monofilament, it'll chop it right off, right? Yeah, that's exactly like my skin. If I don't moisturize, <laughs> uh, what do you guys use for moisturizing? <laughs> All right, Danny, I'm just going to get you to reach your hand in, grab the uh, on the uh, the hard part of the gut here, and we just lift it out. Yeah. There you go. That's <laughs> now, Danny, I want you to put the hook up through here, yeah. right up through the old thing. The old, put the old up right. I see it right on up through. We're going to get a day's work out of you here now. So we're going to set our line around 40 feet down. Yeah. So when the sharks come, do the seagulls beat it? They do, yeah. 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 You'll see that uh, often all the gulls will be just yeah. resting here like they are, and all of a sudden they'll all jump at once and leave. Right. And it's usually a good sign that there's a shark just Stop about to hit, right? Stop. So your seagulls look a lot healthier than our town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there were more seagulls <laughs> that we have. Yeah. They're, uh, they're pretty well fed here. We got the two lines in. We got the fish gut and your tummy out. Yep. So now what do we do? We just wait. Well, right now it's just a matter of a waiting game. Shark fishing goes from zero to 60. It happens pretty quick. Okay. So uh, it can happen at any time, really. You just got to be ready. So how old were you when you first started fishing? Um, when I First when I started fishing, I was around eight years old. Uh, my father died uh, when I was only eight, actually. Um, and I fished with my two brothers. And there was a group of shows called Ragged Rocks, and that's where my brother fished to all of his life. And we knew that place. We didn't have GPSs, we had, but we had it here, and he knew every little place. So he would take me, and he would hanker the boat on one of those shows. And then he would, and my other brother, Jero, would get into a little boat, and they would leave me and I would be in this boat by myself, and sometimes they would go off, oh, probably a mile. When you were eight? Yes. By, by yourself? By, in a bigger boat, when I was eight years old, yeah. Were you, like, down doing a puzzle? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Mostly on my iPad, most of the time, right? Or Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we, we were continuously jigging all the time. You had a jigger in your hand, and you just worked it and worked it and worked it. Cod was our main, that was our main source. We also fished salmon, Atlantic salmon, but cod was the main source. When we went out and I was aboard the boat by myself, whatever I caught, I could keep. That was my catch. So I remember one day in particular, there was a good many cod on the go. Uh, I had... Uh, Anywhere from five to six hundred pound uh, when, I, when, I, when, when I finished up and came into the boat. When you were eight years old, you had five, six hundred pounds of fish that you caught yourself. Yes, one at a time, catching one at a time with a with a, with a cod jigger down in about a hundred feet of water. So, uh, yeah, and when we we came in, uh, at the time uh, they were grading fish. They were large, and they were small. And of course, most of your catch at that time would go as small. And the price ranged from one cent a pound for small and a cent and a quarter a pound for large. So when I came in this day, I can remember, and it, it, it always stuck with me, this gentleman that was uh, calling the fish and buying our fish uh, took my fish and when he weighed it off, he said, any eight year old boy that can jig over 500 pounds of fish deserves full price, so he paid me a cent and a quarter pound for everything I had. So what was that, like five bucks? <laughs> that, yes, but <laughs> but I was, I mean, it was... You it were rich then, Oh, I was rich, yeah, of course yeah, I was. Bucks. That was the way of life then. You didn't have any other choice. You didn't have grocery stores to go to. You did, I mean, they fed their families from the sea, and you worked, and uh, that, was, that was it. And there wasn't only me. But looking back at it, it, I wouldn't change that for anything. That was one of the things that's in my mind that what I did as a kid, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't.
So we've been out here for an hour or so, waiting for the sharks and listening to all the seagulls, try to eat our uh, chummy. Sure. Where do you look? That's a blue, I believe. I don't, I don't want him on this one, if I can possibly get away from it. Here he is, here he is, look. Oh, oh you got, you got, you got, you got, here goes. I gotta get that. That's a, that's a blue by look but Just keep, uh, just keep cranking on her, that's all. Do, you know what I mean? Do what you can with him, but he's going to, uh, he's gonna make, he's gonna make long, long dives on you. Shark on, boys. Shark on! <laughs> shark week starts now! <laughs> Classic uh, blue shark fight. What a beauty. Can't really see how big he is yet, but blue sharks do that a lot, actually. What a beautiful fish. She's gonna go again, Danny. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, buddy. Let her go. So if it comes to you, will smash the rod. Smash the rod, right? Or pull you overboard. Good shark. Not easy being a shark. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Right? So you just hold your ground because when he's ready to barrel again, he's going to barrel. As it turns out, the shark was really strong. He was a majestic creature who fought like a gladiator and freed himself. There were no losers today. I saw him and he saw me, a fitting end to an amazing day on the water. He gets to go back to his shark family and I get to go back to Bragg's Island with the boys. Yeah, so how do you think I did out there now on the sea for a uh, you fella did, from the town? You did pretty good. I mean, the, uh, you know, I think once you, uh, once you got the sunscreen going there and the lotion, you were all good there. I think you did pretty good. <laughs> my, in my mind, I had this picture of it. And then today, as we were going, it was just like a journey back into time for me. 
You know Absolutely. what I mean? And yep. to be there with your dad was really special. And and like my first time I ever saw a shark in my life, right? Right. And and to see it, and it was just like they were like you know these beautiful, powerful creatures. Absolutely. Agree. But I feel in the fresh air like I'm like you know. Are you tired? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Beach out, where's you, eh? Yeah, all that yeah. fresh air, yeah. you, know, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's no smog out there, is there? No. Oh, no. It's <laughs> pretty clean, yeah. Well, here I am in my little stage on Bragg's Island. I'm going to hunker down for the night. Uh, like Emily said, I'm Belle Island. I feel like I'm getting closer to finding my Newfoundland soul. Definitely here in Bragg's Island was incredible and Hair Bay and going shark fishing and just hearing all the old stories and just getting immersed in the culture. I feel really good and magical and like I was thrown back into time. So it was really cool. I'm gonna go to bed out of it now and check my Facebook first and see where the next adventure leads me. Hey Donnie, I've been following your adventures. It looks like you're having a great time out there. Why don't you come on down to Aspen Brook and we'll take you on a rafting adventure. Hopefully I get to see you. Looks like I'm going to Grand Falls rapid riding. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm going to go to bed out of it here in Bragg's Island in the middle of the North Atlantic. I'm uh, pretty exhausted after all that fresh air and uh, good company. Anyways, uh, good night. It's off to dream about my shark friend. I wonder what he's doing now. I can still hear my mother, you're safe or you're home. I'm a home. Seed Where the white gander dies and the king eyes... Smoked salmon, scallops, tountain, your lemon wedge, and of course, the secret sauce. Oh my goodness. You're really good. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. This is what we love to do. We actually have a taste of kippers, too. Want to try one? A little strong. <laughs> this is how you know you're in rural Newfoundland. Where my ancestors lie. Hey everyone, it's Donnie from Big Jib Productions. If you would like to go on one of these exciting adventures around Newfoundland and Labrador, visit us on adventuresunknown.ca. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the show. And remember to like and subscribe. And hit this video here for the next adventure. We'll see you there.